Hey guys, today I wanted to do a first impressions of this core mini palette and um, as a disclaimer, I haven't had core paint before at all in tubes or otherwise. So this is my first impression of core in general. These are made by Golden, which um, I got this on eBay. Um, so it's made by Golden and usually they make oils and really nice acrylics. I do love their acrylics, so hopefully um, this will be good quality as well. Um, it's made with a different binder, um, Aquazole or something like that. So here are all the different colors that Core uh, watercolors offer. And um, this mini set only comes with 12. And mainly I wanted to get it because I love mini palettes. And this one's so cute. <laughs> it's about, oh, I don't know how big it is, how to describe the size, but um, it's pretty small. So this is a four by six photo album. So I would say this is about three by four. So it's about three by four inches. And um, when they arrived and I opened it, they kind of fell out. So I don't know if they're actually in the right spots currently. Um, so I will have to swatch them and make sure they're in the right spots. Because I don't know if I put them in correctly. So here's how they're supposed to be. And um, that's the order they're supposed to be in. And I really like the color selection here. You have cadmium yellow, nickel azo yellow, which is a really nice color. It's basically a warmer um, shade of a transparent yellow. Um, transparent pyrrole orange, pyrrole red medium, quinacridone magenta, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, green shade. So basically a warm and a cool of um, all the options and then sap green transparent brown oxide instead of uh, burnt sienna uh, burnt umber and Payne's gray instead of black which I think is a nicer option as well so basically everything you could possibly need um, this was a little bit angled when I got it so I just kind of gently pushed it down until it lay flat and inside is a silicone insert so we'll try that out as well let me see I have a watercolor brush and a piece of watercolor paper and I'm just gonna make sure um, all the colors are basically and you know what I think it would be nice if we um, put a line let me find a thicker sort of a, here's an 05 be nice if we had a line going through the top and then we'll leave space to label them these are not super precise that's how all my swatches are so don't mind me and we're just going to see how transparent these are by going over the black line. And also the only thing that I was concerned about with them is the drying shift. Uh, they have, they seem based on what I've seen of them and the reviews I've watched uh, to dull after um, drying. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, it matters how much water you add, if it's whether it's like, you know, more, more water results in more of a dull or less water results in less of a dull, or I'm not sure, maybe we'll try to try that out as well. And we'll see how quickly they activate. I'm basically going to not even pre-wet them because apparently they're supposed to be really easily activated. So here's yellow. Oh, let's see, there it goes. Didn't really have to do much. 
and I'm not gonna bore you with labeling all these swatches or actually you know what I'm doing this wrong I usually um, sort of dilute the bottom so I totally should have done that but that's all right so and we'll we'll actually go ahead and wet the bottom this time and see how that works Ooh, that is very transparent you know what I'll move it here so you can even see it better and uh, let me see if I can zoom in okay so we'll, we can see how well it travels into the into the wet bottom as well yeah that's that's definitely a very transparent yellow let's see how that dilutes out that's nice pre-wet it so this is the this is the orange Ooh. Um, so the thing with this binder is that it travels really well wet and wet so if you have wet paper this this goes down really well um, and apparently it's big on you know if you have other types of paint like other watercolors the usual kind um, it will kind of push them out Ooh, this one's very flowy that's pretty we'll see how much of a shift there is so let's go on to the other colors So as you can see, I didn't pre-wet any of these. Um, some very pretty colors. I hope they stay that way after they dry. That's my only concern, like I said. But either way, this palette is super, super adorable and like really great for travel. Like if you have these colors, you pretty much don't, you're, you're pretty much set. You can create any color out of the, this combo. It's very well thought out. So this should be the purple. Ooh, look at the purple go. Wow, look at that. It just goes down. It's like almost black up top. We'll see if it stays that way. I do feel like they might be a lot prettier when they're wet. Um, whereas my Windsor and Newton stay and Daniel Smith, they stay very vibrant even when they dry. So, okay, let's see. We have ultramarine blue. It's not as bright. That one might need to be pre-wet, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think if I had pre-wetted a bit, it might be, might come out a lot better. Like I get more color after I scrub the, the paint. And that one looked a little bit drier than the other ones actually. Like the little paint block looked drier. Okay, let's go on to phthalo blue green shade. Theoretically, yeah, that's definitely it. Um, like I said, they all kind of fell out and I eyeballed them and stuck them back in, but could have easily been mistaken. That's a very strong color. Have to like, <laughs> you know, if you're painting something natural, like don't use a lot of it type of thing. Okay, um, the next one should be the green. Yep, 
This is the sap green, and yeah, that's the green. Okay, good. I actually don't want to swatch them out of order. Although it wouldn't matter much because this isn't the, the little paper that goes with it, but still. Let's get a little bit more up top just to have a good idea of it. Uh, is this the transparent brown? Yeah. I think I stuck them on correctly just by eyeballing the dry paint. That's not too bad. They all look kind of like black little blocks when they're dry, so <laughs> it's hard to tell. All right, and let's see. Yeah, see, they're definitely not as vibrant once they dry, but I mean, that's really not bad. That's actually, it's pretty good actually. Yeah, so this definitely makes for a really nice little travel palette. Let's see if I got these ones. Yep, that, that's the Burnt Umber. So, they're all in the right spaces. And finally, we're gonna have the Payne's Gray as a black alternative. Ooh, that's really pretty. I like how bluish that is. It's almost like um, indigo. It's like a grayish indigo. That's very dark and pretty as well. It's really pretty. So here's how it looks. Let's try to mix something. Um, Try to mix. What do we want to mix? Let's try to mix a couple colors together. Let's just to see how it how things mix on here. And let's do a little bit of this. And we got a bit of a purple. Let's see how that came out. That's a pretty purple. I didn't get a whole lot of color there, so. And it's supposed to, this is not supposed to stain, but I have a feeling it will stain if you leave like such staining colors like the phthalo blue. Um, if you leave that on somewhere, <laughs> it's gonna stain. Phthalo blue is very staining. So, um, and then the other thing we wanna do is maybe try, um, which one I'm trying to, figure out which one is which. <laughs> um, this is the red. So we're going to try this mixing spot. Oh, look at that. Look, it doesn't beat up. I love that. I'm going to try to make a nice orange. How about that? Need a little bit more yellow. And see how they wobble around? They all sort of fell out. Oh, that's a nice orange. That's very natural looking. Look at how that doesn't beat up. That's so nice. I love that. A lot of times on the metal, at first, things beat up. And it's not really beating up here, too. This would be nice for creating a wash, because it's like a little... It's like a little container in there, almost. So the other thing I wanted to try was... Here's my Windsor Newton. These are my Winsor & Newton. So these are like the regular watercolors. They have a regular binder in them. So whereas these ones have the Aquazole and they're super, you know, they kind of like to push other paints out. So we're gonna try and see if that's the case. I'm going to do an experiment. So we're gonna put some Winsor & Newton. Um, let's try Quinacridone Magenta. This one has a really nice Guanacridone magenta. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to do... All right. I admit I'm a fan of the phthalo blue. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. 
or attack. <laughs> attack. Let's see. Look at see how staining that is. It just creates a spot right there. And look, it just blends so prettily. So you can use it on, on its own, just, you know, as a travel palette, but you can also use it in combination with your, like to supplement your other watercolors if you want something that's gonna create this effect where it kind of pushes the other color out or like kind of like blends into it. And like, so just to see what happens. Let's try another one. Let's try. Let's try something. Let's try this nice Windsor red. Oh, look at how pretty that Windsor red is. I love my Windsor new watercolors. They're so nice. Windsor red. And let's try this um, ultramarine blue and see what happens. Ooh. Mm. There. Look at that. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Um, wait, let's try another one. Hold on. I'm like... Let's do it the other way. Let's do... Let's do a blue from Windsor and Newton. We'll do the Athalo blue. Cause you know that we've been doing it the other way. Um, and then a red from Core. Let's do the nice pink. And let's see what happens. Let's see. So the pink is core and the blue is from Windsor Newton. Look, the pink just goes right into the blue. It's kind of a cool effect. So, yeah, so let's see. So this is how the colors came out. Um, the yellows are both pretty nice. The orange is a nice transparent orange. This is a nice uh, red, uh, pyrrole red medium. That's nice. The quinacridone magenta is a little dull, duller than what I'm used to. Here's a, the Windsor & Newton quinacridone magenta. So you can see that the Windsor & Newton one is a bit is a bit brighter and has more oomph to it. Um, that's nice. It does have a bit of a dullness to it, I guess, um, but it's not bad. It's nice and bright. Um, the, both of the blues are nice. I like the blues. The olive green is really nice. I like the transparent brown and I like this cooler umber brown. And um, this gray is not very dark. It kind of, it definitely lightened up as it dried. So the only other thing I can say is maybe if we add another layer, it will look a lot better, which we can try. And see if that dries and gives it a little bit more, you know, if it's good for layering maybe. that to all of them. So my final verdict is I'm glad I got this. I like it. I like the paint. I like the color selection. I like the palette. The palette's super cute. Very portable. Um, can just kind of just grab it and go. Um, so it's nice in that regard. Ooh, I like that. That's really bright. Uh, just good color choices.
and I think if you want the color pushing effect it's really nice to have this um, as a supplement to like your regular paints and you know if you're just using it as a supplement then really um, this small selection will be plenty you don't need you know a whole collection of the core colors unless you want to use them on their own obviously and you like to have a lot of colors <laughs> nothing wrong with that either I certainly have a lot of you know colors um, and other brands as well so I might have to do another video with a final verdict after I paint something with these because um, that would be obviously the ultimate test. Um, yeah, I actually have a couple of paintings I haven't colored in yet. I just have the drawing for them, so maybe I'll do that. Uh, maybe I'll do a couple of paintings and let you guys know how it compares to other brands. So here's the final look. So this was the red Winsor & Newton and blue core. Uh, this was the blue core, I believe. This was the mix we made with the, or the orange mix. This was the purple mix. It came out very lavender and pale. Um, and this was with the core magenta. And then here's the final look at all the colors. Uh, the second layer is still wet in a lot of them, so. But anyways, I hope you guys found this to be helpful. I hope you enjoyed this, and um, if you have any questions, let me know. And here's a final look at the little palette. Very cute and made a bit of a mess in there so let me wipe it really quick and let's see it just snaps closed there you go and then you just pick it up and go so it's kind of nice all right thank you for watching i'll be back later with um some more videos bye